In September last year we visited a truly exceptional coffee shop. One of the best you can visit in Europe. It combines competition level coffee, both high-tech and rare coffee brewing equipment, creative design and cozy atmosphere. Now Lex will brew for us the most expensive coffee in the world. So. We were impressed, so we asked its co-founder and barista champion Lex Veneca to give us a tour. So we're, we're at Fuku now, and we're, um, this is uh, my new cafe, uh, it opened a year ago. We kind of um, we had a roastery for three and a half years now, but we kind of wanted to have a, have a place to talk to customers again. We kind of missed uh, the cafe. Fuku means, um, it means happiness in Japanese, or good fortune, uh, and it also almost says <laughs> which is, uh, maybe put it in the video, maybe. <laughs> it's kind of, a, I don't know, it's, um, we, we thought we could use some, uh, some good fortune and some happiness. We also like the Japanese way of doing things, like focus on one thing and make that as good as possible. We try to do that every day. That's kind of what we're doing here. We don't do a lot, of, lot else, just mainly just coffee. Um, and that way you can, you can put all your energy into, uh, into making the most of it. Nice. Let's take a look. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so this is more the, um, like the low tech, like you said, uh, area. So there's the old old school machine, old school grinder. Uh, and this one, I, I wanted this one for for a very long time. Also, so every I think all the machines here are like kind of dream machines for me. Uh, this one as well because um, yeah, it's designed like very differently than any other uh, grinder I've seen. And because it grinds so evenly, we found that um, there's a high chance of channeling with this machine. It's quite old. Uh, with, with the Slayer, it works very well because um, it kind of has the extended pre-infusion, uh, so you can uh, the shots can run a bit longer. So it's a very nice combination, I think, uh, to have for just for for the espressos. So we use this one only for the espressos. Most, mostly, and then this grinder as well, and then this is for the espresso with the, with the milk kind of combination. Yeah, so this is also kind of like a dream machine for me. Um, it's made by Kees van der Westen, so a Dutch designer, um, and it's built by, by Mozoko. And they did kind of like a collaboration uh, back in the days, but they, they got into a fight over this one. <laughs> They didn't agree because the designer didn't agree with how they built it and the, the builders weren't uh, so happy with the design. So they, they kind of split ways. Uh, Case van der Westen started making his own machines. And uh, I think they only built 160. And this is number, I think it's number 60. Yeah, I think it's number, si it's number 60, I think. Uh, when we started the roastery, we started with only Kenya Ethiopia, Brazil, and Colombia, and then slowly some some coffees kind of uh, were added to the list. Um, so now, if you come in, we have two, four, six, eight, twelve, twelve coffees. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit much, but it's it's good. It's nice, and we have the super specials as well, um, which is kind of also a dream for me. When I when I started with coffee, I. I uh, I wished I would, there would be a cafe where you can get like, uh, just like a wine bar, you can get some normal, co normal coffees and some rare coffees as well. So we kind of started making a, a list of uh, uh, coffees that were a bit harder to get, a bit more expensive also. We didn't expect like, people to actually buy it, but they, they do. They, they spend 12 euros for a cup of coffee, which is, uh, which is very nice. I think. Yeah. Can you describe the process for the super specials? Yeah, because um, I mean, because they're, they're a bit more expensive. Uh, if we would have all these coffees like on stock uh, normally, then we would have to kind of sell them within a week or whatever. And it would be a bit too hard to do because um, yeah, because they're, they're so expensive. So we kind of vacuum seal them and put them in the freezer, and this way we can kind of extend the uh, the, the shelf life uh, a bit, which is which works pretty well. Also, this was a kind of a test. But I think it's, uh, we can keep it much longer and uh, it will still be nice and this way we can offer like more coffees uh, at the same time. Otherwise it will only be one, I think. Nice, what is happening? 
So now I would like to brew for us the most expensive coffee in the world. So let's see. You smell different. This is the, the top one, this is the bottom one. Well, this is like so much more yeah. intense actually. <laughs> okay, so like, so what should we expect from this coffee? Um, so expect um, a classic profile, I think. It's a natural coffee, it's very clean, very delicate, very bright, has some um, tropical notes, very mildly uh, through the cup, I think. It has a light body, lots of sweetness, and very little, little bitterness. Just a very clean and beautiful coffee. So this coffee costs about 10 euros in the cafe, but if it should be priced properly, it would be around 60 euros per and have no profit. So that's mm -hmm. great. Everything uh, is made by us. Uh, we, we just thought, because we also like building things, so we thought we save some money by uh, doing it ourselves. And with the money, we bought some nice tools to kind of do, do the job. So. Um, and um, we built the bar from, from scratch actually. We just walked around a lot here to kind of see what, uh, what the sizes would be and um, how to kind of move nicely behind the bar. I think it worked out pretty well. Because I wanted the yellow bar, it was still a bit of a discussion. I think the first, when we put it in, it was like uh, blue and gray, different kind of colors for the, all the panels of the wood. When we put it in and it looked very ugly, so we, we thought not so nice. Um, and so one night I just painted the yellow. I thought, uh, let's have a look well, if, it, if it looks nice. Um, and it was nice, but it was very bright, you know, and it was only, only yellow. So then we have um, our designer, who also makes all the, all the labels and everything for us. We kind of told him to uh, make a few designs uh, for the bar. And we didn't really agree on any of them. So we're kind of stuck there. And then at some point we just let him have, have the, the stage, right? just, just do something, and if it's not nice, we'll just paint it, paint it yellow again. And then he kind of came up, came up with these weird uh, kind of characters. Uh, we call them Fukus, because we're at Fuku. And uh, this is kind of his, um, yeah, brainchild or whatever. And he just started doing uh, all the different moves on them, and uh, we liked it, so uh, we left it like this. This is kind of how, usually how it works out with our designer. We, we, we tell him to do something, he does the exact opposite. And then we said, like, what is this? And then somewhere in the middle, we, we end up with something very nice. Now we can go to the back if you want, sure. I can tell you about the bun, but it's very boring. About what? About the bun boiler, but it's very boring, so I wouldn't tell but, you about it. But it's good? <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just a hot water boiler. <laughs> so this is the, the front of my, um, my first coffee project. I used to have um, a van that looked like this. Um, and I used to make uh, coffee on festivals and um, markets and stuff. And that was like 2010, I think, so a long time ago. And I kind of, as a memory, I kind of put it, uh, put it here. This is not, not the original one because it's still on the, on the car. But I found this in, um, in Paris somewhere. And I, I bought it, it was great. I had, I had it in the subway, <laughs> which is good. We just left Fuku Cafe in Amsterdam. And right now we can say it's definitely one of the top cafes you can visit all around Europe. And the reasons? Well, Lex Menecker, who was a World Barista Champion runner-up like a few years ago, he still works the shifts in the morning, so you can get a coffee from Lex directly. And also, they have a selection of super special coffees because Fry had the chance to roast many competition lots for barista competitors all around the world. So some portion of this coffee remain in Amsterdam and you can taste them at Fuku. So, that's super cool and we get the chance to taste the world's expensive coffee from Elida Estate in Panama. I think if I, if I would have to pick one thing to do for the rest of my life, I would probably like have a cafe for a couple of hours a day. Mm -hmm. And just, uh, that's nice, that's good. It's a nice way to start the day, I think.